Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's also my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're gonna do the Summer Mist Throw designed by Kim Guzman for Karen Yarns. This is a really old pattern. You can tell by the format but I actually consider this one of the classics uh, of here and when you're looking at this pattern it's so much fun going on there and actually I thought oh is it really gonna work out because of the counts and somehow Kim has it all worked out for us in order to play. So the instructions are on page number two as you can see here. But what I did is that I provided you a crochet diagram. Mm -hmm. Hooking you up with the good stuff. You can have a copy of this just uh, head on over to the crochet crowd for this particular um, pattern and I, I have scanned this and you can have this magical piece of paperwork just for you. If you'd like to change the size of this maybe a baby blanket or even something bigger the multiples are six plus two so you go six, 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 six and when you're satisfied with the width of it just add two more. So six plus two is your multiples. We're gonna be playing with some colors today. Once you get the repeat going it's repeating all the way from two through seven. So go two through seven, two through seven and when you're satisfied with the, the height of it just a stop on row number six. So the final is row uh, two through six. Really easy pattern to be able to follow along. I was really quite uh, happy with this. I've been wanting to film this one actually for a few years and uh, today is your lucky day. Yeah. So I found some Karen Simply Soft. Isn't this loud? Ooh, 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 yeah it's a party waiting to happen. So what I like to do is that we have balls A, B, A, B, C, D. So four different colors. So I like to go on my balls and I like to write the number or the letter so that I can match what I want to do. So sometimes it's easier it says color A instead of looking for the patterns or whatever. So I have written the colors that are available here on the ball band. I did this one. I know I did. There it is. Number B. So let's uh, continue along today and let's get started. When we go to look at the diagram we're gonna get ourselves started with the chain multiples of six plus two as I mentioned and then we're just gonna head on back across the chain, second chain for the hook single crochet. So row number two is the right side of it and this is where we're gonna start our pattern from repeats two through seven and then when you're finally happy with the length of it just add, go two through six and then you're done and then there's a simple border in order to add. Once we have this uh, number two we're going to single crochet half, double. We're gonna get ourselves bigger. Now this three trebles in the one I'm like how is that even possible? And it is a miracle because it works which is so shocking to me. I thought it would be buckling up and it doesn't so that's a miracle on itself and then we're gonna continue to go down. What I need you and then uh, like up and down as we go. So as you can see what we're then going to do is rows number three and four we're gonna follow that up and down just like you see here. Now what you wanna pay attention to is in rows number three and four we're skipping the first stitch out. So we're skipping this stitch when you do number three and then number four you're skipping that first stitch as well so in order to keep the balance. So we're basically going up and down in a nice uh, format and then row number five we're gonna then simplify and we're gonna match the up and down so that we get ourselves flat once again and then rows number six and seven are just single crochets. So you think you're up for the challenge? It's recommending a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook with your Karen Simply Soft. I'm using a six millimeter size J here on tutorial format in order to stay transparent for you. So let's continue now and let's start our first chain and let's begin. So I'm just starting off today and I'm using something loud because it's summertime coming and uh, here in 2020 we're dealing with some issues with COVID and stuff so I just want something bright in my life. So I'm going to ch chain in multiples of six. So you can either do 110 as per the pattern or just go in multiples of six. So just one, two, three, four, five, six. Satisfied yes or no? If not keep on going. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Satisfied yes or no? Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're just gonna stop when you think you're satisfied with the width of it and remember to add on two if you're customizing but if you did the 110 as per the pattern so you don't have to add any extra chains. Let's officially begin and let's start row number one by going second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two just turn it over. Get the back hump of the chain and single crochet yourself all the way across your chain. Nice and simple and this will be row number one and I'll see you at the end of this chain. When you get all the way to the end on the last one here we want to change out our stitching. So we want to just uh, on the second last one before you pull it through so there's two loops. Get in the new color and just leave a long tail and you'll use a tapestry needle to hide those loose ends in or you can be um, fancy on your own. So just pull through the final and so then you'll be getting rid of the fuchsia color. So I'm just gonna trim a tail at this moment. I'll show you how to weave in the ends later. 
and then we're gonna continue then into row number two which is gonna start the up and down motion and we're gonna go across. So um, what I would probably recommend is that we get rid of our tail ends now. So this tail end here because we just did it the way we did we wanna put that through tapestry needle in order to hide it. So what I would do, throw it through tapestry needle and just go through. So just kinda pull things tighter so that everything looks balanced and then just going into the work. The colors really make this work. Now you can do self striping yarn like Karen Cakes and stuff if you might like but you don't have the color control like you would if you were changing out your yarn. So just go back and forth three times. It just takes a lickety split and then you're done and then you can just trim it and you'll never have to worry about it again. So let's now continue into row number two. So let's begin row number two. Leave the straggler of the same color on top of the line and we're gonna bury it in as we go. So we're going to, we've already attached it so we're gonna chain one which I've already done here. I just I did it off camera and I want a single crochet into the very first one. Go right up over top of that straggler as I mentioned. So just single crochet right over it and then in the next one we're gonna get bigger. So in order to get bigger we're gonna do a half. Then we're gonna get bigger again. The next one will be a double. And then finally we're at the biggest and in the next stitch you need to put in three trebles into the same stitch. And when you do this as an experienced crochet you're like is that even possible that you can do that and it works out. It's a miracle. <laughs> it, it's really sh quite shocked me actually to be honest with you. So I'm not gonna deny that. So we're gonna get now smaller. So we're at the top so we're gonna get smaller. So we're gonna go double then a half and then a single. And it's gonna wanna look like it's starting to fan out. It will work out. Trust me I've already run my sample. So we're going to get bigger again. So now that the single's in there we start immediately getting bigger. So half and then a double and then the treble goes in. There's three of those. And then we get smaller again. So it's a double and then a half and then finally back to a single. And I want you to do that all the way across and it will look like it's going up and down just quite fabulously and I'll see you at the end of the line. When you get to the end of the line you'll have a treble that's leading up to the end and we're just gonna get smaller. So it's a double and then the second last one is a half and then finally the last one is a single. Now that's the end of this row. So you look like it's like starting to turn and buckle because there's too many stitches in there. It works out. So let's uh, continue. So round number, th uh, row number three we're gonna keep the same color and so we're going to just chain one and when we do this one we're gonna single crochet in the first one that we just came out of but we're going to skip the, the next one out and here's what we're going to do. So skipping that one go to the next two and do the next two. So a single crochet and a single crochet. Then on the middle one of the treble there's going to be three single crochets. So one, two and three. Then we're gonna go down the hill. So let's get our toboggan out and go two down. So one single crochet in the next and in the next. So two in a row and then the, at the bottom of the slope with your toboggan all these three are gonna be coming together. So to do that you're just gonna go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Let's grab the next friend and pull through and finally the third friend going in, pull through. You should see four loops on the hook before you pull through. So pull through all of them. Now we're gonna go back up the hill so we have to walk up. So we have to walk up two steps. So one single crochet in the next two stitches and then you're at the top of the slope again. So then it's th three single crochets at the top and then going back down the hill so we just for two and then at the bottom of the slope when the ride's over you're gonna collect all three friends. So one, two and three and pull those together and then going up the hill so let's walk up for two Okay, that's the, we're at the top of the peak now. It's the middle one of the treble. You can see that and there's three in that one. 
So look around and enjoy the view. And then we're gonna go down. So you're gonna do this all the way across and then eventually you come to the other side. So watch what we're doing. We're gonna go down the hill for only two and we're gonna skip over the next one and single crochet in the last one. So you have to skip over that one in order to keep the balance and then this is the end of this color. So we're going to move on to color C and I have to find out what color that is for me today. So I have my color C and I am just going to pull that through the final one. So I don't finish that single crochet. I pull through and then I'm just gonna trim this out and then just hide it in with my tapestry needle again and then we'll begin row number four. So row number four and five is the same color, color C. So I just pulled through. Again I would crochet right up over top of the straggler to trap it. So we're gonna chain up one. Now row number uh, four is the same exact thing as row number three. So just single crochet in the first one and you're going to skip the next stitch out and go up the hill again. So let's do our toboggan ride. So do the first two. So after you skip the first one do the next two. You'll be in the middle one of the grouping of the three single crochets and you'll put in three single crochet into that one as well. So one, two and three. Then you're gonna go down the hill. So one and two only and then collect all the three friends at the bottom of the hill. So let's collect them all together and then go back up the hill. So the next two and that will take you to the middle one of the grouping of the three single crochets at the top of the hill. Just put in three single crochets there. So it's exactly what you already know. The only difference is that you've changed out your color. So continue now and just what you already know and I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number four. When you get to the end of the road you're going to just go down for two, skip the next one and just single crochet in the last one and then turn your work and we're gonna do row number five. So row number five has us starting off with a really weird kind of idea and when I say weird it just feels wrong again but it's actually working out and because what you're doing when you go to start off is that you're going to chain three and it says it doesn't count as a double crochet and I'm like what is that about? So it says then to treble into the next stitch. So this chain three and this treble is acting like two together trebles. Okay? Trust me it, it's totally true. The next one here that we're gonna go, so we're gonna go and what we want to do is we wanna balance this out so that it becomes flat. So we're going, where it's lower we need taller stitches and where it's higher we need shorter stitches. So we're gonna go up the hill so we need to get shorter. So the next one will be a double crochet. And then we need to get shorter again so the next one's gonna be a half. And then finally we're at the top of the peak of the hill. That one is going to be a single. So noticing that we're not putting like multiple stitches into the same stitch. So we now have to go down the hill. So we are gonna get bigger so we're gonna go half and then a double. But wait there is more. The next three friends here at the base of the hill are going to become three together uh, for trebles. So wrap in the hook twice, come into the first one, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. Then wrap twice again, come to the next one, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And then finally do the third friend, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And you're gonna put all four loops together and then go back up the hill again. So the next one then will be a double and then a half and then finally we're at the peak to look around that's gonna be a single. See how that's filling in? So let's uh, do one more. So we're gonna go down the hill so you need to go a half to get bigger then a double and then you need to have hot chocolate with all your friends. So pick your f three favorite friends and put those together as a treble. I'm not sure why I have tobogganing in my head. It is uh, middle of May and it's fabulous out. So once you have all your three friends together just pull those together and then go back up the hill. So it'll be a double and then a half and then a single. So I'm close to the end so I'm gonna just keep on going. Look how that's working out. So now you're gonna go down the hill. So you're gonna do a half 
and then a double and this is where I realized that that chain three and that first treble is two together because the last two stitches that you have are going to be two, uh, together. So just do that. So it's a two together treble instead of a three together. And guess what? You're changing out your yarn color. So we'll be doing that. So pull that. So before you pull that all together, you wanna get your next color up which will be the color D. So let me get the color D all ready for you. So I'm just gonna get my color D. It's more of a neon. I'm having a neon day today. And I'm just gonna pull through and finish. And then I wanna trim that other neon color out. And then just hide it with the tapestry needle. And then I'll be right back and we'll go through rows number six and seven. So we're gonna turn our work. So the next two rows, six and seven are the same color once again. And you're just gonna chain up one. And what you need to watch for the most is making sure that last one, when you did that chaining of, th of three, don't include that as a stitch because it's not as part of the two together if you recall. So here in the top one here, we're going to then single crochet ourselves and I would honestly go right up over top of your straggler as well. So just putting your straggler in and go right up over top and save the sewing for later like for never. <laughs> so if you just go right up over top, just pull it nice and taut and single crochet yourself across. So just watch that one in the end and then we'll just uh, go through row number seven and then we can talk about repeats and colors and everything like that next. So going up all the way across, so these two together, make sure that you only put one at the top. So don't put one into that top of that chain three. Then turn your work and do the last row, number seven, just chain one and one single crochet in each. So you can change the colors as often as you want. You'll notice that the rows were um, two rows equals one color. You can change anything you want. So if you wanna change it more often or less, it's up to you. I did do a sample of this all in one color. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I did it. You really can't see your fabulous stitch work and probably not worth your time if you do that. So I think this one lends itself to self-striping yarns too. So if you're not too concerned where the colors are going to land on the self-striping yarn, it actually be kind of fun too. And uh, it's see what kind of combos you can come up with with that. So only four colors are needed for this and you can see in the pattern for the color sequence. So you can just change anything that you want to change and we'll leave that creativity for you. So in order to do this pattern then continuing along, you'll do rows number two through seven as often as you want in order to get the length. And then finally when you're satisfied with the length of this, you will then wanna end on row number six. So repeats two through seven over and over and over and then eventually end on number um, six. So you can see that there's kind of a good side and a bad side. This side here, see how it's different at the bottom right there. So you'll notice that there is a good side and a bad side to this. You, it says that you may wanna block lightly so just damp it but we want to cover the border which is only four rounds and it's really quite an easy border in order to maintain. So let's uh, begin that. I'm just gonna keep the same color on just for um, explanation reasons. Okay, so let's just cover your border. So you're just gonna chain up one and consider that a corner and you're gonna put in three single crochets into that same one. So in the tops and the bottoms you can clearly see where the stitches are but in the sides you have to equally space those out. So just uh, do that and we're gonna come all the way across to the top of your blanket and then in the last stitch you wanna put in three single crochets in order to turn. So all corners have the three single crochets you will notice that there's a color sequence as well for the um, the border as well so you can maintain that if you want to as well. Again it's your creativity. You can decide what works for your life the best. As we come along to the corner, the last stitch here is the turning one so it's gonna be three single crochet and just start working yourself down the side. So here's my tip for the side work. You just wanna maintain the, the spacing. So just where you think it needs to go, just slam in a stitch. The first time around matters the most. So don't go into like a whole space. Just go in into a chain section so that it always kinda keeps it kind of balanced. And you're going to work your way down evenly spacing. So if it's starting to buckle, meaning it's starting to fold up on you, it means that you have too many stitch or too many um, 
um, spaces and that you have to add more single crochets in there. If it's starting to ruffle that means that you're putting the stitches too close together and then you'll wanna just rip that out. So the first time around matters the most and then eventually you'll hit to the bottom edge. And then on the bottom edge you're gonna put in your three single crochet and then work your way across the bottom going all the way there and then work your way up the last side and I'll see you there at the, in just a moment. So just keep an eye. So this should be nice and uh, balanced and we're gonna continue our journey. So to go all the way around in the same concept. So when you come all the way back around then just join it to the first single crochet that you have created and it was on the corner if you recall. So it's the first one of the grouping of three. So now we're going to start. So you can just a uh, slip stitch to the corner one if you want to. It just makes it easier. And then just continue. Now that you've gone all the way around once it's just a matter of slamming in your stitches. So just if you're in the middle one now it's gonna be three single crochets in the middle ones. And for this round, round number two and three we're just gonna do one single crochet in each. Again there is a color sequence if you'd like to maintain it. And then when you come all the way back around then you'll just join it. So three single crochets in each of the corners. But finally the last one, so the last round that you'll wanna do is that you'll wanna take yourself to a corner. So to do the final border all you just need to do then is just chain three counts as a double and then put four more double crochets into there. So technically each one of the corners is gonna have five double crochets in it. The rest of the stitches all the way around is just gonna be one double crochet and so you just have to maintain what you already know. There is a color sequence as I mentioned so it's up to you if you wanna maintain that. And then this would be the final row uh, around to go. So then you'll just turn at the middle one here five double crochets and then continue all, all the way around. I know this yarn is bright, it's fun, it's fabulous and it is spring of 2020. So this is kind of a really cool pattern. Not very hard to maintain and I think that this would be a really good scrap yarn project too and see what you already have and see what kind of colors that can kind of clash but maybe go together and be a really amazing accent blanket for your home. So have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. It's Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as here the Crochet Crab. Bye bye. <music>